yeah, we're still with the same text of uh, Atisha's, which condenses the essence, or which summarizes the essence, in which it says, those who are in doubt with the great resolve of, of enlightened attitude, your bodhicitta, and that exactly is the line that is missing in the text. Apparently I was a bit quick preparing this, so sorry, it's my fault. And then it goes on, those who are endowed with such a resolve of bodhicitta, uh, they are practicing that which is known as the six transcendent virtues. So from among the six transcendent virtues, we have heard Rinpoche explain the first three, which uh, so far uh, were those of generosity, of patience, and of uh, appropriate conduct or discipline. We shall move on now to the fourth of these uh, six transcendent virtues, also known as the six parameters, which is that of diligence. We might wonder what does it mean when we talk about diligence or when we call uh, diligence also concerned or joyous effort. It means to joyfully make an effort, it's as simple as that. There's a word from the masters of the past, uh, presumably Shantideva, who said <coughs> effort or diligence in this way is to enjoy virtuous deeds. What does that in turn mean? It means that, for instance, if we were to practice the Dharma, if we were to perform any which practice of whatever sort, <coughs> if we were to endeavor in any which way uh, uh, along the lines of Dharma, if we uh, would feel joy while doing that, if we would perform such activities joyfully, then that exactly is what we're talking about. <laughs> Looking at this endeavor or this joyful effort or diligence as such, it doesn't really make much of a difference whether one talks about Dharma activities or worldly activities. Whatever it is, if we have done it for a certain time, if we've possibly done it for a long time, we tire a little bit of that activity. We easily get bored with such an activity and we happily rush into something new, some new opportunity, some new type of work or some new type of Dharma activity uh, presents itself and uh, it has all of our attention and we derive great joy thereof to rush into this, to find ourselves immersed in all sorts of <coughs> activities along these lines. Now that is exactly the kind of joy or joyful effort that we talk about. <laughs> Atambongar, <laughs> Yang 
天天打不把他们去给他给我做把他做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做做
If one applies such effort, such a joyous, concerted effort or diligence, uh, then the first type again, this, uh, this type of uh, parameter again comes in, uh, in three subdivisions, so to speak. Uh, then the initial diligence that we give rise to is the diligence which makes use of appreciation, of the appreciation of the virtuous deed, of the practice that uh, we perform. It gives rise to, uh, to a joyful feeling which in turn gives rise to the diligence to perform such activities in the first place. Now, if we have basically habituated ourselves to this, this will in turn give rise to a certain continuity, which means to say that uh, whenever we have the opportunity to bring concerted joyful effort or diligence to bear, well then we happily do so. It does not mean to say that uh, we, uh, that we uh, continuously without let up have to do something, but that we continuously use the chance whenever it arises to do something along these lines. There may be periods when we are very busy with whatever worldly works for our upkeep uh, that we have to perform, and then of course naturally there will be less time for such uh, uh, formal Dharma practice. And there may be other, uh, there may be other periods when uh, we have uh, extended periods of time where we do not have to uh, perform any such worldly works, then of course there is more time. So what this uh, a continuity means to say, and this is also the name of this particular uh, type of, uh, of uh, effort or diligence, uh, continuous diligence, <coughs> simply means to indicate that we use <coughs> joyfully whatever opportunity presents itself to ourselves to uh, practice the Dharma. Either in small doses or in larger doses, that is always up to the uh, corresponding situation. <laughs> Tala, <laughs> And there's a third type of diligence, which is the, uh, which is called the diligence, which allows us to bring a project to its end, to its uh, uh, consummation or perfection. This is most easily explained again in regards to yinam practice, in the course of which, of course, uh, there are always certain numbers of mantras to repeat. And for instance, we might have been told by our teacher that as we start out with such and such a yidam meditation, the development process of the mantra repetition of that meditation, that there is a certain number, let's say a hundred thousand of such mantras to be repeated. If we then start out with the practice, with the, uh, with the uh, strong resolve to fulfill that number, to that, that particular number of a hundred thousand repetitions, then uh, how long it takes us, we practice continuously until that number has been fulfilled. Once we have accumulated the 100,000 mantra repetitions that we have been advised uh, to accumulate, then we have brought that particular project, that particular practice to an end. And that is exactly uh, the third type of diligence, again, as it is called, diligence which allows us to bring whatever work or <coughs> endeavor we undertake to its Consummation to its end, to its perfection. <laughs>
Now that would be the proper way to practice religions, particularly these three types of religions. First, give rise to the actual appreciation of what else are doing there, then putting in a joyful effort or joyfully, uh, diligently practicing whatever it is, give rise to a certain continuity, and as that continuity has established itself, then <coughs> bring things to an end, bring things to perfection, whatever it is. If we were to practice in this way, whether it is uh, the uh, development process meditation or yidam practice or mantra repetition or whether we would practice shamatha meditation or mahamudra, whatever it is that we have received in the way of uh, instructions, that in itself will then eventually bring about experience and it will also bring about realization. As we proceed along these lines with our practice, our appreciation of the practice, our joy for doing the practice, etc., will become better and better and will become stronger and stronger and we will then eventually just not be able to stop ourselves practicing anymore. If one can see Mr. Liza, Yeah, I bring this. Yeah, thank you. Where was I at? Okay, then there are even some, even in the West here, in which it says that uh, go into extended meditation retreats for the purpose of learning how to properly meditate. Some practice in seclusion for three years, the traditional three-year retreats, and after such a retreat, having learned how to meditate, having learned how to perform certain practices in such a retreat, there are invariably some who after such a retreat think that was really helpful, I want to do that again, I want to progress further along these lines. And they just, when go into more retreats, they have done a three-year retreat to do another one which makes for six years, to get the mathematics straight, then nine years or twelve years, etc. and so forth. There are indeed, even among Westerners, uh, quite a number of practitioners who have done that already. So if one were to practice in such a way, then indeed, eventually, one would come to experience the blessing and inspiration of the uh, enlightened one's uh, uh, enlightened body, speech and awareness. And then indeed, we would derive great benefit <coughs> thereof, not only for ourselves, but also for others. So practicing diligently in this way, giving rise to such diligence, establishing it in the proper way, uh, can only be of very great 